And I'm going to help you remember how to do this. Now, I've said here's a function, right? We're going to graph it on the y-axis and the x-axis. The first instinct you should have when you see something like this and you know you're going to graph it, is you should be wanting to factorize this. And I've deliberately given you something which is nice and easy. The factorization is x plus 2, x plus 3, OK? You've got to be able to do that reflexively. This is that part of the math syllabus we call fluency, right? Just like you're fluent in language, you're like, I don't need to look up words in a dictionary to say sentences that make sense. You should be able to do that without thinking, OK? Especially for an easy one like that. I did it on purpose. OK, now what are you going to read off when you see x plus 2, x plus 3? What information does that give you? OK, so you could expand it back if you wanted, but I want something more important. OK, x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 3. What, what are those things? They're the x and Thank you very much. So I'm going to go uh, 1, 2, 3. So I'm putting in a couple of markers there. right? That's negative 2, negative 3. That's where my intercepts are going to be. OK? Now, under some circumstances, I'll just say, cool, and start drawing a graph. OK? But I'm not going to do that, because I know if I draw a graph right now, it may or may not go through the other things that I want on my graph. And I want to be reasonably accurate, right? So I've got x-intercepts. Do I have any other intercepts I need to worry about? A uh, y-intercept, y right? So where can I read that off? Six. It's just 6. There it is. We had a nice long discussion about this when we were going back to this earlier. Uh, y equals 6, that's going to be my uh, intercept. I'm going to place it around there. So I'm actually going to mark these in. Negative 2, negative 3. OK, would you be content right now to say 1, 2, 3, I can go through all those points? Yeah, you could probably do it reasonably well, but I have specifically asked you to put the vertex in. And we know how to find this, right? You can do this in one of two ways. You can say, the vertex lies on the axis of symmetry, right? And the axis of symmetry has this equation, x equals minus, minus b on 2a. 2a. So you could do that. You could get a and b out of there, and you could get an equation. Okay. Oh, by the way, quick question. Why doesn't the axis of symmetry have c in it? You know how it's ax squared plus bx plus c. <gasps> Bless you. Why does the axis of symmetry, it just seems to ignore c. What's up with that? Yeah, no, what are you thinking, man? C is like uh, y. It's like the y intercept. Yeah, so C, okay, all right. So C is the y intercept, but so what? Like, why, why would that, the C attaching to this, why would that mean it has nothing to do with because this? It, it, it like hmm. Now, let's think about this, right? The axis of symmetry, it's a horizontal thing, isn't it? Like, it's, well, for this kind of par parabola anyway. We're going to look later on at parabolas that are actually sideways, so, the, right? But for this, right, the axis of symmetry will be a vertical line. In fact, I'm even going to go ahead and put it on the graph. Can you do it with me? Um, when you put this in, you're going to get negative 2 and a half. It's right between these two intercepts, right? So let's just put it in there, like so. x equals negative 2 and a half. Now, that c, right, that plus 6, what it does, if you think back to when we were transforming graphs, right, that plus c, the 6 in this case, what it does is it moves the graph up or down. Do you agree with that? Like it slides it up 6 units or down 6 units or whatever. Okay. Now just have a look at this axis of symmetry. What would it look like? How different would it look? This is not a trick question, I promise. How different would it look if I moved this axis of symmetry up 6 units? How different would it look to what it looks like now? If I move this guy, uh, there's a ruler, no, here it is, <laughs> right in front of my face. Uh, there is a ruler here, so here's my vertical line, here's my axis of symmetry. I'm going to move it up six units now, okay? Here we go. How different does it look? And so it doesn't look any different because it's just a vertical line. If you move a vertical line vertically, it's, it's still the same line, right? So that's why this is what we would say independent of C, right? It doesn't matter how far you move this up or down. Okay. What are you going to do with that uh, x equals negative 2 and a half? How will you use it to find the vertex? The, the vertex will be on this line. So I'm going to take this value, and where am I going to put it? What am I going to do with it? Very good. I'm going to substitute into one of these. They're both the same thing, right? Has anyone actually got this value already? Ah, interesting. All right, so Ras is asking about this guy up here, right? Now, can I just get a show of hands? Who took this value and put it into x squared plus 5x plus 6? Who did that in your calculator? Yeah. OK, no problems. It's totally fine. Some of you did not. I don't know if that's just because you haven't got your calculator out yet. Um, you can put 
x equals negative 2 and a half into either of these because what the factorization is saying is they're the same thing, right? Just different ways to write it. Um, this is easier to see the x-intercepts. Actually, I'm going to argue it's also easier to calculate the y value, the vertex through this. Because look at it, right? If I put in negative 2 and a half into here, what's negative 2 and a half plus 2? Negative a half, right? I'm just going to write this down here so it's not in my right. Negative a half. What about negative 2 and a half plus 3? Uh, That's a half. That's easy to do. I don't need a calculator for that, do I? That's negative a quarter, just like Ashan said. Okay, and hopefully you got that confirmed if you put that into your calculator. Okay. All right, now, negative a quarter. That's not very far off the x-axis, is it? It's, it's low, but it's not much lower than that axis. I have to be careful, because see this value of 6 here that I put on the y-axis? It means I actually have a scale that's implied here. So if I went and said, okay, if that is 6 on your graph, wherever you put 6, right? If you go halfway down, that's 3, right? It should be 3. If I keep going now and break that into 2 and 1, I want my x equals negative a quarter to be consistent with that scale, right? So if that's x is, sorry, y equals positive 1, there's y equals negative 1, and I want to make sure negative a quarter is about a quarter of the way down. So it's not far at all. Do you see that? So maybe if you just like reflexively drew this, it'd be much lower. So you've got to be careful here. You want to make sure it's all consistent. Bless you. So I'm going to put it about there. Not very low at all. Okay. Now, just one last thing. We're going to draw this now. That vertex, right? Do you remember I gave it an extra name, a special name, which is actually leaning forward to when we meet calculus. Um, it's a long name. It starts with S. Does anyone remember? Stay stationary point. I call it a stationary point, which is a word from calculus. If you don't remember it, don't worry. It'll come up later. But what that means is down here, it's kind of flat, basically. So actually, a trick that I use is when I'm actually graphing this thing, if I know at the vertex I'm going to have this spot here, I actually draw a horizontal line there. I literally draw a horizontal line because I don't want to. I want to avoid the thing where I'm drawing, I'm drawing, I'm drawing, right? And then I'm like, oh no, I'm at the bottom. And then you kind of have to like sharply come up, and your graph kind of looks funny. It shouldn't do that. It should be nice and flat, kind of like a rounded at the bottom. So that's why I put that horizontal line there, so that when I draw this, it's going to be reasonably accurate. Okay, now I'm going to try and fit into the rest of this. So it's going to come up through that intercept there, and I've got to get up to the six. So there we go. And I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, it's not my most beautiful work, but it goes through all of the points that I need, and it's got the general shape. I am happy. 